But these days, everybody tends to make a big deal out of Rotten Tomatoes. Even the people that say they don't care about Rotten Tomatoes, they talk about Rotten Tomatoes like they care about it, because clearly it's impacting their enjoyment of whatever. So let's do the Rotten status report on Thor Love and Thunder, and why ultimately Rotten Tomatoes is one of those things where you don't have to follow what it says or agree with everything. So before we talk about this, I just want to give you a couple of examples of Rotten Tomatoes scores that many people don't agree with. There is, of course, the people that don't agree with the Joker score, which is in the mid-60s. Many people say that Joker is the greatest comic book film and one of the greatest films of all time. Do you agree with that? Okay, so you probably don't agree with the mid-60s score it has, right? And then on the other side of DC, you have The Batman. I think it's an absolute masterpiece and one of the best DC comics films and one of the best comic films of all time. It sits at a mid-80. Do you agree with that? I certainly don't. But again, that's my opinion. And then there's the critics that contribute to Rotten Tomatoes. And I think a lot of people put a lot of stakes into Rotten Tomatoes being the de facto score, right? It's like, oh, well, if it says it's an 80, it must mean it's an 80. If it says it's a hundred, it must be a hundred, right? Congrats, Paddington. I've never seen Paddington, just for reference. But again, I know it has like the highest score. So, right, that's what we're talking about. Recently, Miss Marvel, insanely high score. Do you agree? Do you disagree? And now we come to Thor. And a lot of people are already deciding, I don't want to see the film because, oh, it's on the way to being rotten. And I sit here and I go, Why? You know, and a lot of people that are saying this, they're like, oh, I don't care about Rotten Tomatoes. I love Joker or I love Batman. But if you're saying that I'm only going to see films that are in like 88 or above in the 90s, then you're doing yourself a disservice. You're not doing yourself any favors, right? For all you know, yeah, Thor could be rotten. Let's say Thor ends up in a 50. Some people are predicted it is going to be rotten. It's going to be like a 55. Okay, but you might legitimately enjoy it, right? Just because other people don't and contribute to that score doesn't mean that you will hate it as well. Again, I'm not saying the film's going to be perfect or whatever. I haven't seen it yet. But what I am saying is that don't let these scores define what you enjoy. Can you argue that, hey, if a majority of the critics like a film and it gets like a 95 that it means it's generally a great film? Yes, but it doesn't mean that it is great to you, that you're going to enjoy it, right? For me, it's Interstellar. People love that film. I didn't like it at all. I was just like, I'm bored. I don't like this. Even though I love science fiction, it's trying very hard to copy 2001 and do its own thing. I didn't like it. But at the same time, when we talk about Chris Nolan, I love Batman Begins more than The Dark Knight. Most people won't agree with me on that one. But that's okay, right? And the Rotten Tomatoes always gets brought up for everything. And I think it's kind of stupid in reality. Like, maybe I'm going to love Thor The Dark World. The, the Dark World. The, Thor Love and Thunder. Uh, the Dark World because it's on my mind because I have to rewatch the Thor films quickly. I'm just going to skip it. I'll be real with you. Anyways, though, um, you know, like, you don't have to agree with the score to enjoy something. You really don't? Like, do you agree that The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is the greatest game of all time and no game can ever compare to it? Probably not. Some of you probably haven't even played it. Do you agree that the same thing with Breath of the Wild or God of War recently or whatever else? Probably not. Like, just go in expecting a good time and don't listen to the critics as we always say, you know? If you want, if your money is tight and you believe that this film could legitimately be bad and it's going to be rotten and you're worried about spending money on a ticket, then legitimately don't go see it. That's what I'm trying to tell you because save your money because maybe it is going to be bad. And maybe you are somebody that tends to agree with most of these scores. But otherwise, you know, decide for yourself whenever you see it. That's kind of the takeaway.